welcome to Mental Math for Kids. This channel is dedicated to helping you grow in your math skills by learning fun tips and strategies to quickly solve equations in your head. In this video, I'm going to share with you a quick and fun tip to help you mentally and easily multiply by numbers that end in zero. Multiples of 10, like 10, 20, 30, 100, 500, 1,000, even 10,000. Now you might be thinking, those are some really big numbers, and they are. But the strategy that I'm going to show you today is going to make multiplying with these kinds of numbers so easy. Are you ready? Let's go. Now, I have the equation 3,000 times 6,000 on the screen. How quickly do you think that you could solve this equation in your head? Well, the answer is 18 million. I was able to just look at that equation, do a quick calculation in my head, and say the answer out loud. And once you learn this strategy, you'll be able to do the same thing. And it's really a very simple strategy. All we have to do is multiply the numbers that are not zero first and then count the zeros because the number of zeros in the equation will be the same as the number of zeros in the answer. Let me say that again. The number of zeros in the equation will be the same as the number of zeros in the answer. For example, I have the equation 10 times 10 on the screen. Now, if you remember when multiplying by 10, all we have to do is take a zero from the 10 and put it behind the other factor we're multiplying 10 by, and that will quickly give us the correct answer of 100. Here's our 10, and here's our zero. Now, that strategy is probably the fastest to use when multiplying by 10, but this strategy of counting the zeros will also work. Let me show you what I mean. Now, in mental math, many times it's just a lot faster to move left to right instead of working right to left, which you are probably used to, the traditional way of solving equations starting in the ones place and moving left into the tens place. Well, for this strategy, we are going to multiply the numbers that are not zero first, which means we're going to work left to right. We're going to multiply these ones first, then we're going to count the zeros in the equation and write that same amount of zeros after the first answer that we get. So let's look at 10 times 10. Start with your ones. What is one times one? One times one is one. So we write that first. That's the first part of our answer. Now count the zeros in the equation. There's one zero in the first 10 and there's one zero in the second 10. So there are two zeros in my equation. So I'm going to write one, two zeros in the answer after that first one. And we know 10 times 10 does equal 100. There are two zeros in the equation. There are two zeros in the answer. Let's try some more. Let's look at 10 times 100. First, multiply the numbers that are not zero. One times one. Well, we know that equals one. Now, all we have to do is count the zeros. There's one zero in the number 10, and there are two zeros in the number 100. So we have one, two, three zeros in the equation. So we're going to write one, two, three zeros after that first one. And that gives us the answer of 1,000. 10 times 100 equals 1,000. So simple, right? All we really need to know is 1 times 1, and we can easily solve this equation. Let's look at 100 times 100. Work left to right. Multiply the numbers that are not 0 first. Multiply 1 times 1 first, and we get 1. So we write that answer first. Now count your zeros. 1, 2, three, four zeros are in the equation. So we're going to write one, two, three, four zeros after the one, and we get the answer of 10,000. Now, place value becomes very important when we start working with large numbers. It's important to know to count over three place values and put in that comma so that you can read this number correctly. Remember with place value, each digit in a number 
has a place value. And if you know the correct place value, then you will be able to quickly say this answer out loud. And that's what we want to do with mental math. We want to be able to just say the answer quickly. And when we start working with these numbers that have many zeros in them, we're going to need to know the correct place value so that we can say the equation and the answer correctly. Let's try some more. 100 times 1,000. First, multiply your ones, the numbers that are not zero. One times one equals one, and count your zeros. One, two, three, four, five zeros are in the equation, so we'll write one, two, three, four, five zeros in the answer. Count over one, two, three, put in that comma, and this number is 100,000. 100 times 1,000 equals 100,000. All right, let's try 1,000 times 1,000. We're getting into some larger numbers, but really all we need to know is what is 1 times 1. If you know 1 times 1, then you can easily solve this equation. 1 times 1 equals 1. We write that first. Count your zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six zeros in my answer. I move over three place values and write in those commas. And we know now 1,000 times 1,000 equals 1 million. We have a one with six zeros after it. That is the number 1 million. Okay, let's try a few more. These equations were pretty straightforward and simple because all we really had to multiply were those ones. So let's try some equations with different numbers. This equation is 20 times 20. The strategy is the same. We're going to start left to right and multiply the numbers that are not zero first. So we're going to multiply two times two and two times two equals four. So we're going to write our four for the answer first. Now all we have to do is count the zeros. There's one zero in the first 20 and there's one zero in the second 20. So that means there are two zeros in the equation. So I'm going to write one, two zeros in the answer. The number of zeros in the equation is the same as the number of zeros in the answer. 20 times 20 equals 400. Let's try another one, 30 times 400. Okay, this might look a little more complicated, but really all you have to know is what is three times four. If you know three times four, you can easily answer this equation. Three times four equals 12. So we'll write 12 first. How many zeros are in the equation? One, two, three zeros in the equation. So we'll write one two, three zeros after that 12. And now we know the answer to 30 times 400 equals 12,000. You can see how we can start to do these in our head. If we just multiply the numbers that are not zero, count the zeros, put those behind that first answer, and that will tell us the correct answer. Let's try another one. 500 times 500. Do you know what five times five is? Yes, five times five equals 25. Then you can easily find the correct answer to this equation. Count your zeros now. One, two, three, four zeros are in the equation. So let's write one, two, three, four zeros in the answer. Count over three place values, put that comma in, and we will read this number as 250,000. 500 times 500 equals 250,000. Isn't that fun? We can quickly find the correct answer by using this strategy of counting the zeros because the number of zeros in the equation will be the same as the number of zeros in the answer. Let's try 600 times 1,000. What is 6 times 1? Well, we know any number multiplied by 1 is that number, so 6 times 1 is 6. We'll write that first. How many zeros are in the equation? Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we will write 1, 2, three, four, five zeros after the six. And now we know 600 times 1,000 equals 600,000, a six with five zeros. This is a six digit number and we would read it as 600,000. Okay, let's try 7,000 times 7,000. It looks like a big number and it is, but all we really have to multiply is seven times seven. If you have your math facts memorized and you know seven times seven is 49, then you can easily find the correct answer to this equation. Seven times seven is 49. Write that first, count your zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we write one, two, three, four, five, six zeros after the 49. And this number is 49 million, 7,000 times 7,000 
equals 49 million. Okay, let's try some more equations. These are written vertically. We'll try to go through these quickly because all we have to do is multiply the numbers that are not zero, count the zeros, and write those after that first answer, and then we're done. That's it. So let's look at 20 times 10. Well, we know 20 times 10 is 200, right? Because we could just take that zero from the 10, put it behind the 20, and get 200 very quickly and easily. But we also could have multiplied 2 times 1 and written 2 first, and then count your zeros 1, 2, and write 1, 2 zeros after the 2, and also get the correct answer of 200. Let's try 40 times 20 quickly now. What is 4 times 2? 4 times 2 is 8. How many zeros? 1, 2. So we write an 8 with 2 zeros. That gives us the number 800. Let's look at 100 times 30. Multiply 1 times 3, the numbers that are not 0. That's easy, right? That's 3. So we write a 3 with 1, 2, 3 zeros behind it. And that is the answer of 3,000. 100 times 30 equals 3,000. Okay, let's try 200 times 40. Oh, it's the same numbers. 4 times 2, 2 times 4. That gives us an 8. So we're going to write our 8 first. Count your zeros. 1, 2, 3. And 8 with 3 zeros gives us the answer of 8,000. Wasn't that easy? We could solve these so quickly. Just multiply the numbers that are not 0 first. Count your zeros in the equation. Write that same amount of zeros after the first answer. Okay, let's try a couple more. 50 times 50. We know 5 times 5 equals 25. So we'll write 25 first. Count our zeros. 1, 2. So we're going to have a 25 with two zeros behind it. Put your comma in. And we would read this number as 2,500 or 2,500. Here's our 25 from the 5 times 5. And here's our 1, 2 zeros. Same amount of zeros as we're in the equation. 1, 2. Okay, let's look at 500 times 200. What is 5 times 2? 5 times 2 is 10, right? Let's count our zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to have a 10 with 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros after it. And the answer to 500 times 200 equals 100,000. Now, maybe you noticed with this equation that the number of zeros in the equation is not the same as the number of zeros in the answer. And that is because when we multiplied 5 times 2, we got the number 10. And 10 also has a 0 in it. Now, this is really important to remember that whatever answer I get first by multiplying these numbers that are not 0, I always have to write that first. And even if it has a 0 in it, that 0 does not count as part of the counting the zeros in the equation and writing them in the answer. We always count the zeros in the equation and write it after whatever number we got first. So we had a 10 as the first part of the answer. So we have to write that whole number 10. Then I count my zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I write 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros after that 10. Okay, let's try this equation 750 times 10. Now again, we're multiplying by 10. We could just put a zero behind the 750 and quickly know the correct answer of 7,500 or we could multiply this out and count the zeros. If you remember the identity property of 1 says that any number times 1 is that number, then we can look at this equation as 75 times 1 and know that first answer is 75 because 75 times 1 is 75. Then count your zeros, 1, 2, and write 1, 2 zeros after the 75, and that would also quickly tell us the correct answer of 7,500, or we could say, 7,500 as the answer for this one. Okay, I thought it would be fun to try a really large equation. This is the equation 1 million times 1,000. Now, don't let the large numbers intimidate you. This equation is so easy if we use our strategy because really all we have to multiply is 1 times 1. And we know 1 times 1 is 1. Now just count your zeros in the equation. How many zeros are there? One. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we're going to write a 1. 1 times 1 is 1. And then we'll write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 zeros after the 1. And that gives us the answer of 1 
billion, one million times 1,000 equals one billion. That's a really large number, but it was so easy to calculate this in our head just using our strategy of multiplying the numbers that are not zero, counting the zeros in the equation, and writing that same amount of zeros after the one. All right, well, that is it for this lesson. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you found this strategy of multiplying by numbers that end in zero a lot of fun and helpful. Music